Welcome back, Zerke fans, to the February 2018 1v1 tournament. I am Manuel Strat 33 along with Hogamoko. We're into round three and right away into a near versus catastrophe on Shimmer Shore because we've got to have some kind of C map in this tournament. <clears throat> Wouldn't be a proper Zerke tournament yeah. without a C map. Well, it, it's C maps are just so very different. And, well, it's no surprise, but we don't see the glaives here that we really expected to see everywhere oh, else. Really? I mean, it's not that the water's yeah. that deep. They can walk along a massive chunk in the center. Some places. Yeah, but, but it's just enough. You can see that most mexes are on water. So hovers picked, uh, you know, picked by Catastrophe are a good decision. And also ships are a good decision by an ear. Uh, I would go ships, but really, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's good to see them. Like, just to get an idea of where water balances, because water has always been a bit of a weird situation in this game, but... Hey, Hovercraft versus C, that seems like a pretty solid setup. Yeah, already, yeah. Ooh, uh, coming with the daggers, but the hunter uh, could cause us some problems. I'm thinking more of the Corsairs will be the issue. The daggers can't really deal with the Corsairs yeah. easily. And it's, exactly, like, Corsair had so much DPS. Just, like, shotgunning daggers out of the water. But as you can see, the daggers can just out, uh, you know, outmaneuver them. And this is what they're doing now. If they just raid, kill the Constructor or something, this is going to be awesome. Uh, the Constructor, that's a two-shot raid. But they should be able to pull it off. They can keep on the Constructor for like two seconds. They've got it, dead. But I don't think Catastrophe yeah. is aware that... They're, no, they're not aware. They are going for the mechs. They are now. Now they are. Yes. And they got that Serpent dead to rights as well, so that's something. Or Snake, rather, dead to rights. Serpents are later. Or Seawolf! Seawolf now. I've casted so few sea games that I actually didn't even realize they were renamed. Sea Wolf, and that leaves the Mariner <laughs> completely open. So the Mariner yeah, going down. Really, I think it's going down. I really Oof. think it does. If it goes down, yeah. that's there we go. There's the value. Yeah, that's what they needed. Different. And now those daggers can get away. At the same time, not a whole lot of value was taken by the Corsairs over in the center. And Except now maybe now. The daggers are going to die. Yeah. Oh my God, this was <laughs> rather flash of light. <laughs> fast. Just, just a flash of yeah. light and death. Because that's like how shotguns work. Basically. Yeah. Harry Potter 0K edition. I'm pretty sure in the Harry Potter universe, magic that murders your opponents is considered so illegal to have your soul ripped out of your body. But. Yeah. Well, I, I think the dagger has kind of felt it that way. Is it kind of. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. That was. It's that robots. Was... They have no soul. This is the solution. Well, that's really vital to you. <laughs> well, um, so now we can see that Catastrophe is picking up, you know, is taking Scalpers against the Corsair, which is a good decision, pretty much. Um, just that they are a bit slow. I hope, yes. Can they kite? This is. No, they cannot. Corsairs are faster. I didn't know this. But it seems to be rather crucial. Yeah, um, it's pretty clear the Corsairs do, do have a massive advantage here. I'm guessing we... I don't know what we'll see. I mean, the Claymores are coming up, but that's not going to help much. I mean... Yeah. We could see Mace on top of Scalpel. The Mace at least covering a little bit. But, I don't know. Other than a large enough number of Scalpels that they can just completely power out the Corsairs before the Corsairs get close, this is a tough situation. Yeah, definitely. At least for Hovers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see what you mean earlier when you said that you would have picked ships because this they have the options to deal with each other in a nice little RPS triangle. Hovercraft on the other hand, right. okay for above surface, amphib okay for below surface, but ships can handle everything on the water. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, that's kind of the they are the versatile, you know, water factory. Oh, but never mind, Claymores can actually deal with these. I mean, not easily, possibly the cost of their own lives, but. Maybe it's not completely hopeless. It is mostly hopeless, mm -hmm. but not completely. There, there is a, but there is an option, sort of. At the same time, though, Dagger's managing to find a bit of information, mostly that Anir hasn't really expanded over to the southeast yet. But at the same time, again, we see Scalpels not doing the job that they need to do. But this Sea Wolf is now is going to, you know, make its cost. White, you know, 
killed one max. No, no, only killed one max. I expected it to kill more. Yeah, and with that, the that Corsairs least, are coming. Yeah, yeah. The least catastrophe is suddenly open. Yeah, with the Corsairs coming around the side, these metal extractors are dead. And not much I can stop them. But at the same time, I mean, with a large enough army, I could see catastrophe maybe pulling this back. I mean, this is cheaper. Like, it's not actually not even that much. Cheaper oh my god! Look at it. Look at this. It oh, goes in. Oh man. <sighs> Maybe just a few more no. claymores. That's clearly the that's clearly having some effect. Like enough yeah. claymores, get the splash in there, and no, Catastrophe decides that is going to be the end of the game for them. Yeah, it was quite decisive, I think. It was tough. Uh, that was a tough matchup. But although although it was a bit, you know, I, I wouldn't resign as early, but a near did very, very nice. Yeah, the one thing I would have liked to see more, see what happens with more claymores. I could see that not working. I could totally see why that would be considered a bad idea and why the players didn't go for it. But I'd be curious to see what happens if more claymores were used. I just have, you know, three or four claymores with maybe mm -hmm. a mace for cover and then a bunch of, bunch of scalpels and then see what happens. Mm -hmm. Might not work. Let's go Sigaro and Google Frog. Sure, that should be good. But yeah, I feel like even better Claymore Micro, you know, like eating this, the middle Corsair could be really, really painful. That's the thing that I wanted to see. I really would have liked to see that because yeah, that would have opened I things really up. Also, I was excited. And here with School for Segero, we have a ship um, mirror, which is not surprising. Not at all. I mean, this is, like I said, this is the map. This is the factory used for in this map. It just, you don't have the flexibility, or you don't have the land and sea available. You just have, you just have the sea. Oh. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> well, it ended. <laughs> so that's that. Oh, really? Because I'm still getting it. We still, I mean, this is, nah, Google Frog's really building up. Yeah, Google Frog's got the economic advantage. They've got the quick... They've got the quick setup, yeah. and Zagato again throws in the towel before I even managed to fully catch up. Because that was a very one-sided game as well. I guess this this map just tends towards one-sided games. There's not a whole lot of room for comebacks, it seems. Although I found well, that actually quite a few is that it's actually... There's not a whole lot of room for comebacks. Well, it's, it's just that, you know, sometimes water maps, I think, at least the larger water maps, actually do allow comebacks because so much is uh, about reclaim um although you know i'm, I'm i don't know with, with such aggressive players comebacks are not that frequent that's true and it looks like it looks like most of these are actually done actually yeah, we have Wesley Boss and we have Kingstead Felthas. Um, yeah, let's see if Kingstead Felthas, if that's progressed any differently from the others, because I feel like we are going to get another somewhat one sided match here. <laughs> yeah. Just because this map, thus far, we've seen basically that. Well, in Turkey, we can always be surprised, but it doesn't always happen. <laughs> No. No, it is not. All right, so right off the bat, we have, again, ship v. ship. No surprise there. Kingside managed to get a little bit of mileage off that. But not a huge amount, actually. Managing, managing to get their half. Managing to get a bit of damage in, but ultimately not managing to do all that much. And ultimately, though, there's the fight. That that opens things up a little bit for Fieldhouse, but more so in terms of Fieldhouse's confidence... That being said, Field has managed to rebuild their army a little bit faster than Kingstad, especially with the economic advantage they managed to take early on, and that is going to be really huge. Field Thos coming in with a massive army. Kingstad with basically nothing. Except maybe these Yeah, sirens. this is... Well, you wanted one-sided, you got one-sided. <laughs> it's, it's really simple. I didn't want one-sided, I just expected one-sided. There's a difference. Right, right. It's uh, technicalities. Nah, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> but um, 
I think the fact that King said went for sirens was a bit, you know, they were premature, the sirens. Like, siren spam is a, a valid strategy, but it just was really, really well countered by Felthas. Um, and I don't know. This is just. Yeah, this is not as, 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 we, as we speak, yeah. They are a very generalist, you know, unit. They can handle lots of things, but they're expensive and they're slow and, you know. Yeah, they can only do so much if you don't have an army to support them. And with all the Corsairs coming in, just able to get up close and deal with things, or the Hunters coming in, able to just slow things down. Yeah, but see how oh, no, not so now the Siren that's, is going that's, to... That's a different unit. Yeah. Yeah, the Siren is now killing the subs just because. Just because Sonic Attacks hit underwater. Like I said, it is a generalist, but it is also expensive. And considering the mm -hmm. way that people are building up, it's clearly sufficiently expensive. Like, it's it's good to have, but you're not going to win by spamming it the way you used to. Or at least, not in 1v1. N not on, yeah, not on such a big map. Like, you can't just, you know, waltz with a siren into the enemy base and win. It's not this kind of unit. You need to have, like, a critical mass, and it has to be in one spot. It means that you cannot have enough units in another place, and, and that's why you just have to wait for the right time. Yeah, and at this point, that's clearly pushing a lot of Corsairs and pushing a lot of Cutters. That was the disarm unit I was thinking of earlier. But yeah, pushing yeah. a lot of Cutters in there. Actually, the Cutters could help quite a bit against the Sirens, just because, again, disarm against large, heavy units is the way to go. It's how you counter them. The question, though, is yeah. Kingstad, can they rebuild their army in time? Because Field Thoughts, they have a much larger army. They have a small attrition advantage, but the fact that their army is so big means that anything in terms of economy doesn't matter unless the fight doesn't happen for another... I'd say minute, minute and a half. Well, let's just see. Look how Kingstad is reclaiming. It's really... There is a chance. I can see there is a chance, but it is not the best chance ever. And that's the thing. It's just a question of, can Kingstad get their army up? And that's, that is the thing that I'm not sure uh, about, because Kingstad's army yeah. is... Well, it's in a bit of a disadvantaged position. Especially when you consider that a lot of it is really light units that are relying on status effects. And they're going to go down in a second if they do get too close to these Corsairs, which they do. One Corsair does get disarmed, but that's not enough to stop this entire army from basically running in with, well, no real difference to whether or not the Cutters existed. But the Cutters did take co did take money and did take build time. Yeah, and three Corsairs in the northwest uh, actually doing nice. They're making a nice raid with Feltas' army just not in place to stop it. But at the same time, though, Feltas' army is in place with, like, five sirens coming in, pretty much ready to just, yeah. wall, just walk all over Kingstad's base. And Kingstad doesn't really have much to stop this. Not over to that side. Over to the western side, yes, maybe it's a distraction, but it's clear that Feltas is thinking, all I need is this one siren and this one hunter, and that'll stop things, and they are right. With the urchin support, the I mean, the Corsair might be able to get one, maybe two mexes, and that's it. While at the same time, over the main base, Failthos is managing to get all the damage that they need, managing to take everything out. The one, the one thing working in their favor is the Mistral. That is the one thing the Kingstead has that's going to give them a bit of mileage, but even then, it's not quite enough as the Mistrals do get yeah. locked down, do get taken out by the Corsairs, and that yeah. should open things up pretty well enough. Mistrals win against... Sirens. Um, oh, that's a fair point, though. They do, but no, this is just not looking that good. I mean, if if Kingstad's able to get those Mistrals enough and keep the Corsairs at bay long enough, they could theoretically stop the Sirens and even out the army sizes, giving Kingstad the opportunity they need to rebuild yeah. and counterattack. But that is yeah. difficult with the Sirens, especially coming in here, taking out as best, much as they can with the economy. Reclaim is still nice. Um, still going in Kingston's favor. Yeah, massively. 20 or 30 metal reclaim. On top of all the production as well, they can take full advantage of that. The one thing, they're, they're they are running into yeah. energy, though. Like, their energy situation is where they're getting limited. Yes, it's actually build power, I think. 
Oh, is it? Oh, you're right, and it is. No, yeah. yeah, well, both of them, really, because at that point, it was 60 metal per second and yeah. 60 energy, so oh, in right. both cases, they're doubly and limited. I think it comes back, uh, the commander is now... No, 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 it's going to be safe. Yeah, Fieldhouse's commander is actually... Mm, I don't know, no, no, no not at dead. all! Going down the power of Corsair is at close range, taking out Fieldhouse's commander, which is a small blow. I mean, they, they're they still it's behind in a conflict with Reclaim, but still, it's something. Yeah. You know, four metal seconds, like raiding two maxes. Yeah, um, and, and also six the, energy. Yeah, yeah, and these and islands become harder to construct on as well. Right. Okay, and this is aggressive game. Uh, I mean, Fieldhouse is going over for the Mariners, and they should be able to take out a couple of them. And that that means less build power. That means less. That means reclaim. Their economy is going down. I mean, this is where the economy is getting hit. With all the reclaim, yeah, Kingstad's yeah. economy is their Mariners. And the yeah, amount of damage exactly. they managed to deal. At this point, Fieldhouse, they've got a massive advantage again thanks to that one raid. Thanks to the Mariners going down. Thanks to all the reclaim now going to Fieldhouse instead of Kingstad. Ooh. But now at this point, the Seawolves coming in. They should be able to find small targets, but not really focusing on anything at all. Just trying to find whatever targets they can. The Mistral's helping against the Corsairs. At least the Corsairs being slightly distracted by the Seawolves, allowing the Mistral some room to breathe. But a couple Corsairs around the front still managing to get rid of a handful of them and still keeping the contain going. Yeah, it's just like a slow and steady ball of ships going northeast with not much to stop it, because now the Reclaim is on the other side of the ships. And Kingstad just can't get there. And with that, Kingstad's got like as much as they can, going for as li as many bits of Reclaim as they can, as much production as they can, and I like to use the yeah. Sea Wolves, but the Sirens are there to stop that. And the Corsairs yeah, don't get exactly. stopped by that so much, but then at the same time, there's reinforcements in the center, so if the Corsairs go down, more will replace them. Full we will see, like, I don't, no, no, all Mariners almost gone. This is, this is very, very bad for Kingston. Yeah, at this point, they have two Mariners, one of them in production, well, one of them just finished being produced. The other one possibly going to go down, and does go down thanks to the Mistrals of all things. Missing with one of the rockets, yeah. finishing off that Mariner. But at least yeah. it's close enough the caretaker can be reclaimed on its own. There's still a couple mariners. Like there's still enough mariners being built for Kingstad that they have something to work with. But they are so heavily contained that I don't see how much mileage they're going to get out of that, even with this handful of sea wolves coming out here and there, taking on what they can. Yeah, just not enough. And you can see that Felsus is starting to reclaim in the south. This is very very bad for Kingstad. Um, but. Um, yeah, I expect the game to be over, like, in a minute. As soon as Failthos manages to get in a strong push, Kingstead doesn't really have much to deal with it. It's difficult, though, because the Mistrals are causing a lot of problems. Like, they're making the Sirens less effective, they're yeah. keeping the Corsairs at bay, they're damaging them, they're softening them up before they get in. So, it is still difficult for the Corsairs to find mileage. It's still difficult for the Sirens to do anything. But, again, that contain is strong. Failthos can just build up an increasingly large army. And eventually, they'll have enough. I mean, heck, they might even decide to be super daring and then go for a reef or something. Just like, you know what? I'm done. Striders, let's finish this. Yeah, I don't expect that to work. Strider, so you'll see, like, air or something. Air is really nice in play in these cases where you just want to break. You know, you just destroy the Maxis or destroy the factory. And That's bam, true. Like, yeah, a few it's funny how sometimes 0k is not all about material and somehow about morale. Like, when you kill someone's commander, it's not just about... Um, even, you know, the most pro players don't want the commander to die. Well, no, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's huge. Really, yeah. It's, it's a forward yeah. constructor, it's a bunch of economy, it's a bunch of storage. Like, it has a lot of uses beyond just being there. Right, right. And the fact that it's a forward and constructor, I'd say, is a big one. Like that, that to me, is the biggest one. Yeah. But... I don't know. But you're saying morale. In order to really... In, yeah, it's like, in order to really end the game, like, even if you're in the lead, what causes the enemy to, you know, throw the towel? So I think for this, you need, you need to do something 
um, extreme, like kill the entire enemy force or to go and destroy his base. Like, you know, a surprise air switch, even if the player knew that he's on the losing side, this is when he understands that there is no way to respond. Yeah, and like just, if you can see now, King yeah. Stud is sending an attack force on the on the west. He can still do this. I mean, theoretically, like... the, the the economy disadvantage is quite large, but a lot of it is still up front. I mean, a lot of the reclaim is happening in the front lines. And with this distraction, if that forces a split of Fieldthaz's as forces, that could theoretically open Fieldthaz up for a counterattack, but it's yeah. it's not something I see happening for the sheer number of forces Fieldthaz has in here and the fact that they're so close yeah. to the factory. And once they get to the factory, that's it. It's done. And they're five seconds away. Yeah, yeah this is quite over. I mean, well, a few urchins at least, that's something that is holding things off, but Kingstad, I don't see it. I just, I'm sorry, I just don't see it. You've got, what have you got left? Wait, what, what, what did Filters do now? Like he suicided all oh. his stuff. What I don't know. Here? I think they figured that they just win with a big push, but at the same time, that one Corsair in the back line has had very little in terms of any kind of interference. Which has killed Fieldtoss's production, losing all of their caretakers, but two. Still, though, King's Dead realizing that's not enough, and that is the towel. There it is. Yeah. At last raid attempt. I mean, maybe if that Corsair had managed to get all the caretakers in the factory, King's Dead might have realized, hey, you know what? I've got a chance. I just opened everything up. But. Yeah, but no. no, I think it was just a point of let's show that I can do some damage before I throw the towel. Probably, you know, yeah. A final. Uh, a final show of, of skill. Yeah, or at least a final yes. middle finger to his opponent. One of the two. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, but I think Higgs that played really well here. Um, it was against Filthus, which is one of the favorites, really. And um, I enjoy this game. Yeah, that was that was still a well-played game. It's just that, of course, there's always winner, there's always loser. So that is how things go. And I believe we are going to be setting up round four pretty shortly, but... I'm not sure because yet to get all of the results updated. Yeah, we have round four. And so I think either Felfas versus Sigaro or Google Frogger. You no, know, actually, everything is interesting. Yeah, well, GPR Kira and Waka Flocka memes have, I believe, both left. And I would like hmm. to see what NTO is up to, or NTO is up to. So, like, maybe NTO versus Catastrophe or something like that. Would be an interesting match to watch. Mm -hmm. So, sure, sure. Yeah. But uh, that's waiting on the actual thing to be done. So we'll just take a short break until the brackets get get completely set up and finalized. And then when that's done, we are going to be back. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. 